Hey everyone, this is Driving with Joe, and today we're going to talk about edge cases. If the logic in your code accounts for 99% of the possible scenarios, but even then, your program has to take into account some very specific, infrequent, but possible scenarios, then you have found an edge case. Edge cases are those scenarios in which you have your logic that accounts for almost all possible situations that you're looking out for, but then there are these really rare, but possible scenarios that if your program were to encounter, would actually fail without you specifically checking for them. That's the essence of an edge case. Edge cases explain why it's so hard, if not impossible, to unambiguously parse someone's full name into its respective parts. For example, if I gave you my name, Joseph Bradley McCullough, parsing it into its expected parts would be saying Joseph is the first name, Bradley is the middle name, and McCullough is the last name. When it comes to US names, it's pretty simple to account for 99% of the names out there. You can basically just group the strings by uh, spaces. For example, if I enter in my name, Joseph Bradley McCullough, we can group the strings representing the name parts based upon the fact that there's a space between them. So Joseph, space, okay, Joseph must have been the first name. Um, Bradley, space, okay, Bradley must have been the middle name. McCullough, last name, because that's the only one left. We can kind of count spaces to figure out what kind of name was put in. If it was first, middle, last, first, last, only first. But even though that simple logic can account for many names, there are so many possible edge cases where that will fail. For example, consider, consider the name Mary Rose. Now, I know somebody that has the name Mary Rose as a first name. That is not their first and last name. That is actually their full first name. And they do get quite offended if you call them Mary or Rose, not call them Mary Rose, because that's their first name, Mary Rose. If I were to make my parser just look for spaces, then it would look like this person had four names and my parser wouldn't know what to do. Maybe my parser would think that last portion, which would be her last name, would be a suffix, sort of like junior or senior, if I was looking out for those things in my program as well. Uh, that does open up an entire other um, pool of scenarios. When you have suffixes like the second, the third, junior, senior. For these reasons, it's really hard to parse a full name. And all of these different reasons, all these small, infrequent, but completely possible situations, those are edge cases. The best way to predict edge cases is to have a thorough and complete understanding of the subject matter at hand. For example, if we were setting out to create a name parser, then we would need to know the answer to the old Shakespearean question of what's in a name. We would need to do our research on the matter, discover what are all the possibilities involving names, what are the conventions, and whatnot. And then once we have that information, we can be a bit more cognizant and cautious whenever we're actually writing our program. If we were to do our research and realize what's in a name, then we would actually see that what's in a name is very inconsistent. It's really hard to define a name. In fact, it hasn't really been done. A name is really subjective. Some people might have a single name that represents their first and last name, or just, they don't have a first and last name, they just have a name. Or maybe someone has multiple names. Alias, I don't know, there's so many different situations, and they're all abstract and not really well defined that attempting to create a name parser in the first place is just asking itself for trouble because the edge cases cannot be controlled. There are situations where there are just a few edge cases and you can look out for them, but when it comes to names, for example, there are so many edge cases that the problem itself becomes unsolvable. It is much better for you to ask what data you're specifically looking for, like first name, last name, and in their own separate fields, as opposed to trying to guess the part of someone's name. Another strategy for predicting edge cases is to examine the variables used throughout your program and perform some simple analysis on those variables. The analysis you should perform 
is to take the data associated with the variable, like the context we have prescribed to it, and then take the data type of that variable and understand when that data type fits the context and when it doesn't. For example, let's take the concept of age. If I have a program and I'm asking someone, how old are you? I'm asking how many years have you been alive? And usually I'm asking for a whole number. People don't really say, hey, are you 23.47 years old? I was like, no, 23. Thus, the way I would represent the idea of someone's age in my program would be an integer. Age to us is some number that represents how old we are. And there are some rules about the value of the age. For example, the age of somebody cannot be negative. It can be zero, if they haven't been born, or they've just been born, or it can be the number of years they've been alive. But, that age cannot be negative. Conceptually, it doesn't make sense. However, the data type that represents the idea of age, which is an integer, is perfectly fine being negative. It can be positive, it can be negative, it can be zero. But the integer is the best thing we have to represent the idea of age. Unfortunately, when it comes to computer science, you do not get a data type that best represents your situation 100%. You have to figure out what best represents your situation. And you need to understand when that data type represents your data correctly and then when it doesn't and look out for that. So in my own program where I'm asking the user for their age and years, I would probably verify or validate that the age provided is greater than or equal to zero. And this isn't because I think my users are dumb and they're going to enter in bad data, but it's because I understand the nature of the data, which is age, and I understand the possibilities and capabilities and range of the data structure representing that age. I understand that integers and age overlap in some parts and they don't in some others. Thus, my job as the programmer is to make sure that the values entered correspond to where the data makes sense for the context. Another example that comes up pretty often is dates. If you are creating some sort of scheduler in your application where the user is entering in a date for an upcoming event, we have to separate the idea of a date and the structure used to represent that date from an upcoming event. An upcoming event to us means some date in the future ahead of now. So like take the date that represents the idea of now and some date in the future represents an upcoming event. However, a date could be any time. A date could be January 1st, 1970. Thus, in order to avoid the edge case of a user entering in data in the past, we have to recognize the data type that represents the notion of an upcoming date can also represent dates in the past. Dealing with edge cases is an ongoing battle as a programmer. Every single time you create or even alter a variable, you have to ask yourself, what data does this variable represent? What context are we associating with it? And then what data type are we going to use to represent this data? And lastly, how does the data type and the context relate? Do they overlap all the time? Do they overlap some of the time? And if they don't overlap all the time, how are you going to deal with data that comes in that does not overlap with the context? It is your job as a programmer to make sure you can account for those situations.